right now. Good morning, Congressman Paul. Good morning, Jan. Nice to talk to you. Well, last night, I know you wanted to be in Des Moines and participate in the uh, Huckabee premiere of The Gift of Life, but uh, your New Hampshire schedule had you all tied up. Right. I got in very late last night. <laughs> so what I'd like you to do is uh, just uh, just continue. Uh, you, you missed uh, the premiere of just a fantastic uh, pro-life uh, DVD movie. David Bossy produced this thing. Uh-huh. A- and uh, Mike Huckabee has really latched onto this cause. And it is one of the most powerful presentations that I have ever seen. And uh, I know once you've seen it, you will agree. Uh-huh. If, if you had been here last night, what have you would have told the pro-life community here in Iowa? Well, I would have probably summarized what I've tried to summarize or write about so often in my book that's on, uh, on the abortion issue and the pro-life issue. And that, to me, is I think it's probably the most profound issue of the past century because if we cannot understand the importance of life, we cannot defend liberty. If we can't defend liberty, there's not much left to America. So I've placed a lot of emphasis on this. I've spent a, a good bit of my life uh, delivering babies and understanding what life really is from a scientific viewpoint. I've understood it from a legal viewpoint, that there is a legal entity. But I also understand that if we cannot defend life and understand that there's no uh, chance that we can defend the, vet, the rest of it, and I think in these last several decades, especially since the 1960s, life has become cheap. It, it became cheap in the 60s, you know, during the Vietnam War and the drug culture and then the onset of abortion. But if you look at that, there's a parallel of that to the undermining of all our liberties. And also, when life is cheap and you can throw it away and say it's, it's not a real life, all of a sudden, there's a change in attitude on how we even treat our young people. And if you look at some of the statistics about child abuse and uh, violence in families, that's all came up. So I think this is the most cru- crucial issue. And I've also made a point, which sometimes people don't fully understand what I'm saying, is actually the morality of the people determine the laws about how we handle this subject. The morality of the 1960s changed. And that prompted the uh, Supreme Court to change. So the Supreme Court is guilty of of encouraging abortion, but actually it was the people who changed in the 1960s when all the abortions were done illegally. And therefore, we should work very hard to uh, have the best form of laws to curtail this. But ultimately, it will depend on the morality of the people and their respect for life that will make the difference. It, it, so it's got to be bottom up. It can't be top down. What sort of, is there? Is there a role for uh, government? Uh, what if there is a role for government? What does it look like? Well, it's it's a role for government because it's an act of violence, and if you're going to have government at all, it should be the prevention and the punishment for acts of violence. The big argument is that uh, a fetus isn't a life, and therefore it's not an act of violence. So it has to be punished, and uh, we punish all other acts of violence and criminality you know, at the state level. So the responsibility is for the states uh, to, uh, to take, uh, take that responsibility. Well, the argument I- is that Roe versus Wade took away the state's ability to do that. That's it, right. If that's the case, then what is our response to Roe versus Wade? And to get rid of it. And uh, that my I I had a proposal ten years ago that we could have get, gotten rid of it without a Supreme Court ruling and without a constitutional amendment, and that is just by majority vote in the Congress. What you can do is remove the jurisdiction, uh, you know, from the federal courts. So if Iowa or Texas had a law against abortion, it would not be reviewed by the courts, and it would be a virtual repealing of the uh, of Roe versus Wade without waiting agonizingly long to wait for new Supreme Court justices and to get a constitutional amendment passed. I think there's nothing wrong with proceeding that way, but in the last 10, 15 years, nothing has happened. So uh, this is why I look to this uh, option of uh, just by majority vote and the Congress uh, or the president signing the bill uh, that we could accomplish this much better. And I always thought that we had that opportunity when we had the House and the Senate and the presidency. But unfortunately, I couldn't get enough people to agree uh, with this. So it, I think we always fail when we nationalize things because it sounds good if you can nationalize it and write one law and do the right thing. Well, that sounds good. 
too often when you nationalize something like Roe versus Wade, they do the wrong thing, and it takes mm-hmm. away the right of the of the states to do what they want, which was the intent of the founders to allow the states to sort problems out like this. Didn't uh, Roe versus Wade nationalize it though? Yeah, and I think that's wrong. That's why we have to have to repeal it and, and get rid of it. That's why I don't like the nationalized uh, answer to all these problems because when they do it wrong, like Roe versus Wade did, it affects all of us. You know, even though that was a Texas law, if they weren't had not been allowed to review it, then Texas would have still had that law in the books. And I think this is the quickest way uh, to move in the right directions and stop uh, a lot of abortions. It's that if Roe versus Wade couldn't have heard that case in Texas, just think of how many millions and millions of abortions would have been prevented. Um, the uh, it, therefore, as president, if you were elected, uh, what would your tactic be? What would be your plan, strategy be on the issue? Get uh, the, the goal would be to remove uh, Roe versus Wade, and uh, of course, thinking about it, it would be thinking about Supreme Court justices as well as uh, promoting this option and being the willing to sign a bill. That would just say to remove the jurisdiction from the federal courts. That would be the fastest and the quickest way uh, yeah. to uh, minimize abortion. You'd have to have a majority, obviously, to do that. Yeah, but that's a lot different than uh, yeah. waiting for, uh, for Supreme the Supreme Court, yeah. court to yeah. be changed. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, those people who have uh, labeled you anti, uh, some people have gone as far as to say that Ron Paul is not uh, pro-life. <laughs> Uh, well, and, and because you won't go to a federal uh, remedy for this. Well, I'm going to the federal remedy by uh, changing the uh, uh, option to go to the go to the federal courts at the federal remedy yes. by removing by removing that power of the Supreme Court to nationalize this by laws. So, uh, sure, it's it's it's, uh, uh, it's interesting. Uh, uh, do, do you deal with politics? You're in you're in Iowa. You're on. You, are you in Sioux City already? I am. I okay. came in early in the morning. Uh, because uh, you're the perceived front runner, uh, narrow lead over, uh, well, I don't know, where, where are you on the great scheme of things? According to that policy uh, survey, uh, you are neck and neck with the uh, with Gingrich. He has a, what, like a one-point lead and then followed by Romney. Rasmussen said uh, Romney's in the lead now. I, I don't know how much faith we can put in these polls, but now that your poll numbers are so high, do you anticipate blowback at tonight's debate? Oh, yeah, I, I would think so. I mean, uh, they can get pretty nasty. The uh, I saw some stuff on there already, you know, uh, distorting viewpoints, and uh, I, I expect that, that to happen. You've uh, got um, a, yesterday, I was just watching, I know your time is limited. We have to go here in just a moment, Congressman Paul, but Dick Morris went out of his way to attack you yesterday, saying a vote for you is a vote for Obama. Rush Limbaugh sort of pushed you in front of the bus yesterday in an interview saying anybody ex- except Ron Paul could beat uh, <laughs> um, uh, o- Obama, and uh, the, the, the attack has already begun. How do you respond to that kind of rhetoric? Well, I think that's propaganda because uh, when you look at my views, because I take a different view on uh, these endless wars, uh, which – uh, the base for Obama uh, agrees with me on this. Uh, I think uh, I have a much better chance, but the propaganda machine goes. As a matter of fact, these negatives that are coming now are by the military-industrial complex, the people who love perpetual war, and uh, they, they're the ones who don't want to hear this. Also, the establishment on, on the monetary system, which you know a lot about, and you know the bankers and all, they get these endless bailouts, and they know that uh, my reputation has a lot to do with challenging the bailouts as well as the Federal Reserve on, on how they're now preparing to bail out all of Europe. There's a lot of powerful money interests that uh, are very, very frightened about the exposure of what, what, what they're doing. Because, and, and we've made great progress. So as far as they're concerned, I am their enemy because I'm exposing exactly how they have financed their largesse over these many, many decades and uh, we're in this major, major monetary financial crisis that uh, they don't want to give up their power at the Federal Reserve. So that's the real reason why they'll, they'll be attacking me. Uh, Congressman Ron Paul, I really appreciate you uh, joining us this morning briefly. It was unanticipated, and it fit uh, our schedule perfectly. And I, I 
Thank you for coming back to Iowa. And when you're here, come and see us, okay? Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Thanks a lot, Congressman. Uh, uh, that was sort of out of our schedule. <laughs> And I didn't mean to leave any of you out of this, but our time was extremely limited. And the reason I invited him on uh, this morning was because he was not able to come to the uh, pro-life meeting last night. Later this morning, I...